Hey, what's up, guys? If you've been following along for a while and you've been watching my channel, which I appreciate all you guys, you'll know I don't normally do videos like this. Normally, it's just hunting. It's all I ever do. I don't really do the gear reviews, anything like that. It's just me hunting. But I wanted to do something different. But before I do that, if you can, you come across this video, just subscribe. That's all I ask. And watch the video. If it helps you, it helps you. If it doesn't, let me know what I can do better. But I do want to talk about something that you're either one person or the next person who is either for it or against it. You like one or you like the other. And that, that's what's the best broadhead. Now, me personally, there's no such thing as the best broadhead. I think it's all on shot placement. Like we're taught, if you're hitting inside that paper plate, you're going to hit lungs, you're going to hit heart, you're going to kill a deer. So if your shot placement is good, any broadhead will kill a deer. Now, I grew up shooting muzzies. I don't know if you guys remember that. The little five blades that came in a pack, and you had to assemble the blade through the bevel, and then you had to screw the top on. I loved them broadheads. I was killing deer left and right with them. Then as I got older, I switched. I actually went to the Rage Hypodermics, and I was a super fanboy of them. Like, a lot of people on the internet did not like them. They said they were garbage. They had so many issues. I ran them, and I never had an issue. Now, they left amazing blood trails, but I did have a downside to them at the same time, and I'll get into that. But what I currently shoot now, these are my favorite broadheads, and there's a reason why they're my favorite. These are the G5 Montex. I absolutely love these broadheads. They're one of my favorite. And the reason why is back to that paper plate. If you have a little bit of error, my opinion, a fixed blade will blow through shoulder. It's going to blow through them bones. It's going to hit and break anything it hits and goes right through it. You're not going to get that with a mechanical. You get a mechanical and you miss just a little bit forward and you slam a shoulder, you're getting pinned in that shoulder. You're not going to blow through it. What I was shooting for the last year were these here. Now, these are the Mega Meats. They are also another great broadhead, and I'm not going to knock them. I did kill deer but the reason why I say about mechanicals that I have issue with is I use a Matthews and I have a Matthews quiver and it's got the styrofoam now I'd get up in my tree stand set my saddle up pull my bow up and I'd pull an arrow out of the bow so I could put it into my bow and get ready to hunt and every single time my broadhead will get stuck inside of the styrofoam even last year in the video where I shot the buck and I had the dogs track it, I tried to get a second follow-up shot, but I could not get the arrow out of the quiver. It kept getting stuck in the styrofoam. So that alone was enough for me to switch back to the G5 Montex. I love these broadheads. I could tell you a story. I actually put a shot on one. It was about four years ago. The video is on my channel. And the shot was back. And it hit it towards the back hind at legs and I watched him run away and I thought it was a more forward shot than it was so as we're tracking the blood it's all over there was a massive blood trail still and the shot was pretty far back and as we came up on the deer it couldn't walk so it blew through it still full penetration all the way through and blew up the back leg so it wasn't able to move so we did have to put a second kill shot on it but I 100% firmly agree, if I would have used a mechanical broadhead, any mechanical, whether the Rage or this hybrid, I don't believe I would have got that deer. I believe that it would have not went through both sides. It would have stuck in him, and he would have ran away, and he would have probably survived. Now, I don't want to get in a whole theory of how fast or slow your bow should go or how heavy your arrow should be or how light it should be per broadhead. But I firmly believe that if you are shooting a mechanical broadhead, you do want a heavier arrow setup. Now, what I do on all my arrows, I always shoot 125 grain. I like a little bit more power up front, a little bit more weight, so it smacks harder in my opinion. But like I said, with mechanicals, the heavier the arrow, I think the better because you're going to hit through that bone and possibly open up all the blades and pull through it. Now, I don't believe if you took... A mechanical and you shot let's say 270 feet per second 
I don't believe you're going to, and you hit a shoulder, I don't believe you're going to blow through that shoulder. I 100% believe if you did that with a fixed broadhead, you're going to blow through that shoulder. Now, like I said, this isn't a video I normally do. I just wanted to keep this short and sweet. But there is a broadhead on the market I do want to try before I end this. And I don't know if you've heard of it. It's the Annihilator. To me, that broadhead looks phenomenal. And it's supposed to last a lifetime. I think they're like $70 for a three-pack. So it could be a good investment. But for right now, I'm still going to stick with the G5s unless something in me is like, yeah, I'm going to get them. But to wrap this video up, I'll say it one more time. It does not matter the broadhead you use. Use what works best for you. It's all about shot placement. If you're putting it inside that plate, every time you're going to get a kill. But like I said, thanks for watching, guys. It's just a quick video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.